All right, uh, let's start. Okay, so we are studying this uh, uh, linear regression. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, so initial setting is uh, we are given uh, two va uh, variable of x, which can be either single uh, random variable or joint random variable, and also another random variable that is paired with uh, each of these uh, random variable x. And then uh, we assume that uh, this y has this yeah relationship. So it basically follows this uh, uh, yeah, linear combination of this x. And in this particular case, uh, is corresponding to the case where we have a single or scalar uh, random variable in our x part. And uh, we assume that uh, we, yeah, we have some adder that is involved or added to this final observation that we that we obtain as y random variable <clears throat> and uh, typically we assume that this uh, random adder e having a uh, zero mean <clears throat> okay then let's see and then let's look at our goal here what is our objective or the goal in this case? So the typical, uh, typically we do not know what the true value of this alpha and beta are. So we want to estimate these alpha and beta uh, based on our set of pairs of x and y's. Okay. So if we have like ten different pair of an x and y, and then we want to estimate this alpha and beta um, yeah yeah with our best so we try to do our best to estimate the the, the true alpha and beta value and then in order to yeah do this job uh, we uh, first think of this error term so <clears throat> So what we are uh, doing is that we assume that this uh, uh, y is uh, represented as the true alpha and x and true beta plus some error term for each pair of x and y i's. And then we do not know alpha and beta. And let's suppose or denote the um, estimator for alpha and beta as a and B. Okay, these are the estimator for alpha and beta. And why are why are we writing them as this uh, capital letters? Because they are a random variable. And uh, what kind of random variables are are they? So why are they random variables? <coughs> So yeah. So we have a given x i's. So x i's are typically given and fixed value as these. Okay. So these are the observed x values in our sample. And then this one is a uh, uh, transformed linearly, or yeah, this one uh, goes through some linear transformation, and then. Uh, it it is added yeah it is added with uh, another random variable e i okay so altogether this one is a random variable uh, that forms y and our estimator of alpha and beta for uh, which are our true parameter and uh, these estimators are a and b are the functions of x i's and y i's okay so these are the random variables so um, yeah the function of these random variables which are our estimator a and b so they are random variable okay and suppose we obtain some uh, estimator 
for this uh, uh, A and B. And then, yeah, so we assume that YIs are represented as this AXI plus B plus some uh, error term, right? So we just uh, replaced alpha and beta, which are unknown values, with our estimator. Okay. <coughs> and then we assume that this uh, uh, EIs are yeah, typically like zero. And yeah, in order to like best estimate this alpha and beta, we want to minimize this uh, possible error uh, of EIs yeah, as a small as small as possible. So in that case, this YIs, which we also observed, okay, and then uh, it can be represented, uh, yeah, so this error term can be represented by this, so YI minus A minus B XI, <clears throat> okay, and then uh, this one is basically representing this uh, EIs, right, so we are basically minimizing this EI squared, uh, by assuming that this EIs will be typically really small, and then so this is a uh, um, the total squared sum of our error values, okay, between given YIs and also this linear transformed linearly transformed value from our given input XI. And then uh, we squared square this difference and then sum them up. And then this is uh, uh, what we want to minimize. So our goal is to minimize this error term. Okay. And uh, why do we minimize it? Or what is our purpose uh, when minimizing this error term? <coughs> yeah, we utilize, I mean, by minimizing this, we can obtain the um, estimator for A and B, okay? So by minimizing this, uh, yeah, the requirement or equation that will minimize this uh, error term will give us what, uh, what kind of functions of our estimator of this A and B are, okay? So, <clears throat> so we are minimizing this error with respect to A and B, and then, so in this case, yeah, so let's uh, think about just a single, uh, like two, um, yeah, two observations that we have. So we have only like two uh, pa uh, observation pairs, one, and squared plus y two minus a minus b uh, x two squared. So it is just a uh, yeah yeah rewritten in terms of these two error terms. And then if we uh, yeah take the derivative with respect to a, I mean the pressure derivative. And then we first treat uh, this uh, big part as like really big x. And then x squared will be, yeah, differentiated with into two x, right? And then what is x? Yeah, so we treat this part as x, like so. Two times this, and times what? Inside of this part, we take, yeah, we further take the derivative with respect to a, and what is that? So it is like minus x, and then, yeah, it's a derivative, will be minus 1, and so we will have minus 1 here, and then we have another similar form from here, and then if we re-represent them by using this uh, uh, summation or sigma, and then we will obtain this. <coughs> okay, and then another one, uh, Another equation can be obtained by uh, the, taking the derivative with respect to b. And then, yeah, we still view this as a large chunk of an x. And then we will have 
minus uh no two times x so to this point it will be the same but when looking at this part if we take the derivative with respect to b and then it will give x1 here and then minus right and then yeah this similar term will be produced from here and here and then uh, representing them <coughs> using this uh, summation sign and then we obtain this <coughs> so uh, what do we do next we should set them as zero right because when this guy is minimized then the partial derivative with respect to a and b will be a zero okay and then yeah, similar to the derivation of obtaining the maximum likelihood estimator for the Gaussian random variable or Gaussian distribution for mu and sigma square yeah this we have two parameter two unknown parameter of alpha and beta and their estimator as a and b and then we have some equation that we want to yeah we have some mathematical expression that we want to minimize and then we take the partial derivative with respect to our parameter of a and b and then we set them as zero and then the resulting two equations will be like the joint equation so from here we cannot directly obtain the equation like a equals something and b equals something because a and b are all mixed in both of these equations so we have to like jointly jointly solve these equations right <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> so uh, let's rewrite each of these equations. So in the case of the first equation, we can represent, yeah, we can distribute this summation sign or sigma into each of these terms. Okay, and then yeah, it's. Uh, Okay, so we set it as zero and then we just uh, cancel it out and then it can be represented as yi minus a minus exi right and then we set them as zero and then what about this term so inside of this summation it is not dependent on x uh, sorry i <coughs> So while i goes through yeah goes from 1 to n yeah uh, it yeah this value doesn't change so it can be simply represented by as n times a right okay and then we just let's just uh, simply divide it by n and then we set yeah we divide it by n and then we cancel it out and then we also divide it by n and then uh, this part can be further represented by b times xi divided by n right so here b doesn't change at all i mean with respect to i right i will not change the b value so b will be constant while this uh, iterating through i <coughs> so that's why uh, we can uh, write this in this manner and then this guy is what? It's a sample mean that we have. And this guy is the sample mean of y. Okay, so altogether, y minus a minus b x bar equals zero. Okay, so that way we obtain this. So from here obtain this equation right okay so we just uh, uh, rewrote the first equation uh, <coughs> in a kind of a cleaner and compact form and then what we next yeah what we do next in this case is to substitute a with this value in the in the second equation okay so 
yeah let's look at the second equation yeah so let's see sine <coughs> so it was a uh, zero and then we can also cancel it out and then we do the same thing so for the first term it will be this guy and so for this guy and this guy we can factor a out of this uh, summation sign and then x sign and then minus b times sigma x i squared right okay and then we set them as this and then we obtain this and then we replace this a in this place <laughs> okay and then let's see Okay, so we do one more trick of representing this part. Okay, it's the sum of x i. So it can be represented by <coughs> n times x bar. Right? And since we are using a small x, it, let's represent them as this. Okay, and then we can replace this guy with this representation. <coughs> then we obtain this right so the remaining one is the same we just uh, uh, yeah, used the y uh, x uh, sorry a as this representation obtained by the first equation okay then the and then uh, we just uh, factor yeah with respect to b and then we obtain this as here and then what about this term x bar is just a constant or scalar value, right? And then n times x bar squared. Okay, and then the remaining part will be this guy. And then, yeah, we just move this part into the other side or the to the left hand side, and then uh, we will we'll obtain this. And then b will be represented in this manner. <coughs> So this is our estimator for a, uh, sorry for b, and then what? Uh, what? Uh, what about our estimator for a? <coughs> Since we obtained b with respect to our samples of an x and y, and then we just use uh, the fact that a is represented by uh, this, right? And then we represent this b in to this equation and then we will obtain a which is an estimator for alpha okay but uh, yeah it will be a little bit messy if we just plug this equation into here but uh, let's yeah let's just uh, think about uh, its meaning <clears throat> so b was what b was uh, corresponding to the slope so uh, y was uh, alpha plus beta x i plus epsilon i and then b was kind of a slope in our, our linear kind of shape uh, and then b is obtained in this manner and then what about this it is yeah it is yeah let's factor with respect to n and then it will be like x i squared divided by n minus x bar squared right so what is this it is yeah it is a uh, looking similar to what the variance of an a right 
the variance of an A. But uh, it is not a true variance, right? So if, yes, yeah, in case xi follow the Gaussian distribution, or maybe it's O mean and the sigma squared, in this case, what was the true variance? And uh, how do we obtain this uh, estimator for this variance? And then, yeah, it is like uh, x bar minus uh, x i bar squared divided by what? n minus 1. So this part can be represented as x i. Yeah, so we have it yeah, here. And then uh, <coughs> n times x bar squared, right? Yeah, the numerator was uh, rewritten in this manner, and then divided by n minus one, and then here we are using n, right? So it, yeah, if we view them as an estimator for the true variance, and then yeah, it can be like under uh, underestimated or biased estimator, right? But anyways, <coughs> so we are not yeah in this context we are not. Uh, we are not uh, estimating for the true sigma that uh, x has, but we can just uh, understand this as a, some kind of an empirical or kind of a sample variance uh, based on our data. But we are using the denominator as n. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we are. Uh, yeah, we have some uh, variance for x, and then we multiply it by the number of data items. Okay, so that was the denominator. And then what about the numerator? Numerator, yeah, so let's look at this or manipulate it in, in this manner. Yeah, we factor n out in this case as well. And then i x i y i divided by n minus x bar and y bar. <coughs> okay, so <clears throat> so this one, yeah, this one, yeah, this one and this one is quite similar. And so that was, uh, yeah, that is called what? That is called. So if this was a variance, or this was a variance, and then what about this one? It was called, yeah, something like covariance. Does it make sense? So what was the, the definition of a covariance? Xi or expectation of <clears throat> x minus mu x and y minus mu y and its expectation, right? And then empirically, we can think of some empirical covariance as xi minus mu x, for example, and then yeah, yi minus mu y. So Given x i's and y i's for each of our observations in our sample, we subtract its own mean value, and then sum them up, and then maybe divide it by n. So, yeah, this one is empirical uh, covariance, right? So it is measuring basically the covariance. And since we do not know the true parameter mu x and mu y, and we are replacing this as x bar and y bar, which is our sample mean. Okay, and then the numerator part can be rewritten as this guy, x i and y i minus <coughs> minus. bar times y bar, right? So this is a just another representation of this. 
So we derived this maybe a month or so ago, right? So we just multiply them, they will produce this. And then uh, if we multiply them, and then multiply them, and then we have this term as well, okay? And then this guy, yeah, I mean, we are using this, right? And then if we use this and sigma and xi minus uh, times y bar, and it, it will be factored out because it's a constant. And then what about this? It is x bar, right? So this term will produce x bar, y bar. And this guy will produce also x bar and y bar. So we have two of them. And then in this final term, final product term, will be just x bar and y bar. And so yeah, one of them will be canceled out, and then we obtain this. So we represent them. Yeah, we can represent them in this manner. So it can be considered as an estimate or uh, empirical kind of covariance between x and y. <clears throat> and what 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 was the covariance? What was the covariance? So we remember, yeah, we studied the uh, correlation. Right? So what was correlation? <coughs> so the correlation was uh, So this numerator divided by the standard deviation of an xi and standard deviation of yi or x and y, okay. And then this one was correlation coefficient, right? And then this one ranged from minus one to one, and <clears throat> so you guys remember uh, we discussed uh, about this figure and then uh, if two variables are having this uh, pattern so if x increases and y also increases and then yeah it has a positive correlation so that is just a normalized version, a ranging between minus 1 and 1, but that the nature of this measure is basically the same as covariance. Okay, And then this is a normalized version, uh, ranging between minus 1 and 1, but if we do 